Last year, I applied for a software engineering internship position in Google and actually managed to get a call back for an interview. I was surprised because even though I was obviously very qualified, I was still just a freshman and as far as I was aware, recruiters didn't want to invest too much time into freshmen. Regardless, this was going to be my first very big technical interview and I had two weeks to prepare for it so I just lead coded day in and day out. This would prove to be my downfall. The day of the interview comes and then I get on a phone call and I proceed to fail miserably. It was horrible and very humbling to say the least. So what exactly went wrong? I'm gonna walk you through that and what I would do differently if I could go back in time and do that exact same interview over again so that you don't end up making the same mistakes that I did and so that you managed to get the job, unlike me. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. The interview itself consisted of two 45 minute sessions with two different interviewers. The first interview was more data structured and algorithms focused and the second one was more object oriented focused. I made slightly different mistakes in both interviews so I'm gonna walk you through each session individually and then we'll talk about the mistakes I made and how I would fix them. All right, let's jump straight into it. The biggest mistake I made in both interviews was just not communicating enough, but this was a lot more apparent in interview number one. The interviewer sent me the link to the coding environment with the problem statement. I sat down and just started to code without even really reading the problem statement out loud or even talking to the interviewer about it. After 20 minutes, I was done. And when I asked the interviewer to check over my answer, he said I answered the wrong question. I read over the problem statement again and I realized I completely misinterpreted it. And now I was panicking. I was stuttering on the phone with the recruiter asking for clarifications and normally this wouldn't be a bad thing, but because I hadn't talked to him for 20 minutes before this, he probably docked off a lot of points. Regardless, I sat back down and answered the actual problem and wrote out the actual code. Now you're thinking, well, that's pretty good, right? No, it's not because while I was doing this, I wasn't talking to the interviewer at all. I was just coding and all he could hear was this from a mechanical keyboard. Now, when I'm done with this, he actually follows up with an extension to the problem like a lot of technical interviewers do. And because I wasted the first 20 minutes answering a problem that doesn't exist, I just didn't have enough time, so I just coded some nonsense. But again, I wasn't talking to him. And this was really stupid of me, because in the 45 minutes, I think I maybe said like something for five minutes total in those 45 minutes, which isn't good. You should be talking for a lot more and explaining your thought process. Regardless, the interviewer at the end of the day probably thought I was a potato and gave me like either a weak no or a strong no because I just wasn't talking and I wasted so much time trying to answer a question that doesn't exist that I forgot how to actually code. So how would I fix interview one? Well, my coding was fine. The problem itself wasn't that hard, but my communication was very off. I would have entered the interview a lot calmer and you know, taking five minutes at the beginning to talk about the problem with the interviewer and really walking through what my approach was gonna be and then set about implementing it. And just the entire time, just keep talking and talking through my thought process, explaining, you know, oh, okay, this is why I'm using this type of for loop here. This is why I'm implementing this part of the solution this way. Here's the time complexity of what I'm doing. And just really keeping a conversation going so that he's aware of what my thought process is because not only would that help me think clearer for the problem I'm trying to solve, it would also give the interviewer a better impression of me. Of course, I would have also asked for clarifications at the beginning of the problem so that I wouldn't end up wasting 20 minutes answering the wrong question. My second interview went a lot better than the first one. Uh, this was a class implementation problem. He gave me a class to implement backed by a certain data structure with some functions and the coding behind this was pretty easy and I was talking to him throughout the interview, but I wasn't really explaining my thought process for each implementation. What I was instead doing was kind of just saying like, here's the general high level, but I wasn't explaining, you know, why I was implementing things in certain ways. Now this doesn't mean you have to explain every line of code that you're writing, but if you're implementing a solution, in some way there's different ways to implement it, then it's best to explain to the interviewer why you chose the way you did compared to some other way, and you know, walk them through the time complexity of it maybe. Regardless, the interviewer probably thought I was competent, just not a strong hire. I would fix session two in much the same way that I would fix session one, by communicating a whole lot more. Something that might help you do this is conducting mock interviews with your friend. Lead coding by itself is fine, but it doesn't really capture the whole experience of the interview. Hop on a Discord call or a Zoom call with your friend, screen share a lead code problem, and walk them through your ideas while you code it up. Walk them through your solution and have them ask questions about the time complexity, the implementation choices, the design, all of that about the problem. You know, questions that a real interviewer might ask. This is gonna be mutually beneficial because the mock interviewer will learn what questions naturally arise and how to ask themselves those questions during the interview. And the interviewee will obviously learn how to talk through their solutions while somebody else is watching them code. After a while, switch it up so that everybody gets experience in both roles. And after a few weeks, you guys are probably gonna be looking pretty good at being good technical interview candidates. 
Now, I would suggest that this be something you do fairly, fairly regularly before your interview season comes up. And if you can't find somebody in real life to partner with to do your mock interviews, then join my Discord server, link in the description down below. And hopefully you can find somebody in there to mock interview with. Otherwise, if you can't, then there's probably have other communities online that you could probably find some in, or just go around your college and ask some other computer science majors, hey, do you wanna be a mock interview partner? And you know, a lot of people might say no, but some will probably say yes, because it's mutually beneficial and a really good thing to do. If you want more general advice on how to get an internship, I made a video about that recently, and I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. Once again, because I can't emphasize this enough, communicate with your interviewer. Practice doing this any way you can. Hell, even if you're lead coding by yourself, talk through your thought process out loud. Your roommate might think you're insane, your parents might think you're insane, but that's probably gonna be beneficial and you'll get a lot of experience and confidence in doing so, and that's what really matters. That's all I have to say for today. Hopefully, something I said managed to help you out. If you liked the video, hit that like button, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.